when my kids were in school full time mm -hmm. at Tweesmere School, mm -hmm. which is where now you are, yeah. right? Before that, I used to volunteer at the school along with other mothers. There was about 10 of us, I think, and Arnie Schmidt was the principal. Hmm. Okay, now he's a, a cycling enthusiast. Yeah. Trail but, guy. Yes, but he used to be the principal at Tweedsmere School, and he was very gung-ho and talked all us mothers into going over and volunteering, you know, so I did that for a couple of years. And I thought one day, you know, if I had a teaching degree, I could get paid for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids were in school full-time, so I went to Nipissing University hmm. as a mature student for six years. And it was just the best thing I ever did. I was 36 when I started, okay? But after two weeks, I just fitted right in. But I tell you what, most of the classes that I was in, I, I majored in um, Canadian literature. What years was this? I started, I graduated in 80, so we'll go back mm -hmm. six, six years. years. I started in 36, 30... 74. Right. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't major in math at all. <laughs> My psychology professor said, no, 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 you, you can't major in psychology because you, your math stinks. <laughs> <laughs> so I majored in Canadian lit literature with Dr. Sharman. Okay. And then I had a minor in classics with Diana Walton and a minor in psychology. But because of my age, I mean, I wasn't ancient, but I was 36 when I started. But all my years of experience, I got so much more out of my classes mm -hmm. than some of the kids did. Yeah. Even like with the, the war years, especially, you know, going mm -hmm. through that experience and then sailing across the Atlantic, you know, that sort of thing. It was... Uh, Do you remember the name of the boat you came across? The Aquitania. No kidding. No. Yes, for sure. How do, you, how do you say it again? Aquitania. Hmm. And I got pictures of it. Right. And uh, we docked at the famous Pier 21. And I got a file on Pier 21. Some friends of mine went down and they went through all the things and gave me the printout from when we left Southampton, you know. And we were seasick all the way. It was just terrible because it was in March. We docked March 16th, 1948. And the... The ship itself, the Aquitania, was still in its troop ship form from when it had been carrying the troops back and forth. So there were three, there was a big room and there were three tiers and I was on the top. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And my mother and sister, were, yeah, and everybody was seasick. The first day was nice and the last day was nice. But the last day as we were pulling into the harbor at Halifax, my dad took me up to the front of the boat. And uh, I can never remember if it's the prow or the bow, bow, one or the other. And I actually remember seeing it. It was a beautiful sunny day like this, coming into the harbor, you know. So my passion is that one day I'm going to see Pier 21. Just yeah. about had it nailed for this summer, but it didn't work out. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, this history keeps popping up, these memories. How long was the voyage? Seven days. Seven days. Yeah, yeah. And my dad, and the thing of it is, my mother and sister and I were together, but my dad had to go down. He was way down in steerage because he was a man and he couldn't be with all the women in this cabin, you know, so we were separated. And it almost goes back to, you know, when the people left Ireland, you know, the people, the immigrants that came over, they were just squashed together, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but... Anyway, um, but my dad used to bring up food from the uh, wherever the dining room, and it just all went out the porthole because we were just so sick. It was just terrible. But anyway, um, yeah, so we talked to the famous Pier 21. So how did we get onto that? <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to meander all over the place. Yeah, sure. We were talking about the, uh, your involvement with the museum, and uh, we started with you getting your uh, degree your degree at Nipissing University that's right and all that was a proud day it really was because it had always bothered me when I was in London Ontario I went to Beale Tech and we were called tech bums my parents did not see any value whatsoever of me going to collegiate because you're just going to get married and have kids what do you need an education for and that was the mindset in 19 whatever you know 50 in the 50s uh, 55, I guess it was. You know, you don't need to go to 
collegiate, you know. Mm -hmm. I did well at school. I used to get honors. but So I went to Beale Tech, learned how to type and do shorthand, you know, and that kind of stuff. But I was bored. The teachers, some of the teachers were, they had no control of the classroom. So it's even worse now. So that really helped you when you went to the Nugget. <laughs> well, <laughs> so tell so you, so in 1955, I said to my parents, you know, I, I'm going to leave school. So remember my dad's, because there was one, Mr. Johnson, he had no control of the, uh, the, the uh, arithmetic class. Just, it was terrible. There were a couple of other teachers that were really good and I res respected them, but I was, I, I was not having a good time. And so I said I wanted to quit school. So my dad said, you have to get a job first. So within a couple of weeks, I got a job at the London Free Press. Oh, right on. Yes. And I worked in the dispatch department, yeah. which is the department between display advertising and the composing room. Okay. So I was there for two years. London Free Press is one of the best newspapers You're in right. Ontario. You're right. Yeah. It was then too. It was a small place. It was on Richmond Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know a guy named Randy Richmond that works at the London is that right? Free Press right now. Yeah. Anyways, I interrupted. So I was there for two years. That's okay. You're a newspaper person. And um, so my dad was transferred to North Bay. So there was a guy in, in London. name was Don Luton. He worked at the Free Press. And he knew somebody in North Bay at the Nugget, so it, that's why I got the job at the Nugget. Oh, perfect. But they did not have a dispatch department mm. like they did in London. So I set up a dispatch department at the Nugget. Well, I was Ross Blakely's secretary as well. He was the advertising manager. And my first job when I went in was to lay out the paper for the next day. So I get in touch with all the departments and see what they, you know, what they wanted. Mr. Stone was in classified, I think. Because I was writing advertising, and uh, I would lay out the paper, mm. pencil and paper, every day. That was my first job. Cool. Whatever. <sighs> I, hey, I did that. Yeah? In my job. Yeah, I did lay out. Okay, it was great. And then I also used to sell hookers for all the national ads that came in. i call up, you know, Clayton Donhill and get a hooker at the bottom of the car ads and, you know, stuff. So that was a good two years. So then my father was transferred again to Regina. I think we have to explain to hookers to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the old days, they were little ads that would go at the bottom of a national paper. <laughs> yeah, they say there was a local store. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Words change, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did that for two years, and my dad was transferred out to Regina. I followed. They went out in September. They went out in the summertime. My dad was going to open up a big new store in Regina to sell glint paint all over Saskatchewan. It was going to be a new store. And, but I stayed behind for three months because some friends that we had made on Banner Avenue, she was going to have a baby and they had a little girl. And I, so I stayed behind to look after the little girl while she had her baby. So the end of the story is September. And I had just met Peter at a wiener roast on Premier Road. So the gang from the Nugget and Peter came down to see me off on the train because you could get the train on Oak Street where the museum is now and three nights and two days later you'd be in Regina or wherever you were going. Not to interrupt but I got one joke. Did your dad sell flat paint in Saskatchewan? <laughs> Actually, he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Dale. Very good, Dave. The, the, other thing, the other thing is, is I took the train in 1989 at the Oak Street Station yeah. when I t had a job out, going to an interview for a job at the Peace Arch News in BC. Oh, wow. Yeah. Peace so, Arch. I know where that is, yeah. Yeah. I lasted seven weeks. <laughs> it's too nice there to work. <laughs> It's lovely. My parents gradually moved to Vancouver and I visited them there several times. Let's go back to you. <laughs> so I'm on the train down the station and I have a bird, a budgie or a canary, one or the other, in a cage. I'm traveling with this bird in a cage. I'm taking it out to Regina anyway. Did you leave it there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got there alive, thank goodness. But Peter came down, and he, and he wrote a poem, and he gave me a little present. And you're going to read that poem for us? 
it was it was about try you know rails of gold or something gave me a gold bracelet sort of thing yeah. oh that's romantic it, it was very so of course when the train pulled out i'm crying and the porter says now 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 dear don't cry <laughs> i never thought i'd see peter again <laughs> anyway so I guess one night I was, I guess it was around Christmas time. I was doing the dishes. And I thought, oh, I'll just call Peter and wish him a happy Christmas, you know. So I said, you know, very flippantly, I was young, you know. Um, when are you coming out to see me? And he said, well, I thought I'd come out in March. I said, what? <laughs> so he did. He made, he made two or three trips out there. To Guys see in me. love, eh? Yeah. So I was out west for two years. And... I was in Regina for two years, working in my dad's store. I was his secretary. That was not a good thing because you, I'm your father. You do as I tell you. <laughs> well, that's not how I learned it at school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your father. Yeah. You didn't argue with my father. Anyway, so I then Peter and I wrote, you know, long letters. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the year, he drove out west in his little Volkswagen, loaded all my stuff in his car and brought me back to North Bay. Was it a Volkswagen Bug? Yep. I see that. I see Peter driving that. <laughs> I see it. He did. He yeah. drove it out to Saskatchewan. Did he have a little dicky on? No, this was summertime. Okay. <laughs> Don't be smart. No. <laughs> this was summertime. But he had been out to see me. He flew out once. And then the previous summer, he had come out for a week. And then we went to a drive-in theater. And he wouldn't listen to me, and he took the wrong way out, and he got stuck in the gumbo. Oh. And was he mad? Yeah. Because the car wouldn't move. It wouldn't go anywhere. They don't have very high clearance, though. And he was banging on the horn, then, because he broke the horn. <laughs> oh, nice. I think he was mad at himself for not listening to you. Anyway. Anyway. Has that he, been a recurring theme? Yeah, pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> pretty well. Anyway, he drove me back. But we were going through Brandon, and you know, because we were stopping at restaurants, and I got some kind of a bug, and I was desperately ill. Oh my God, terrible! And they finally got a doctor and gave me some stuff. But then we got back to North Bay. So then I went back to the Nugget. I got my old job back. Oh no kidding! Yeah, Good that for was you. great. How long were you with the Nugget? Well, that was with the Nugget then for another two years, mm -hmm. pretty well. And but the thing of it is. When I left North Bay to go out west, a friend, I don't know how I got to know her, but some Bill O'Halloran's wife. Now, Bill O'Halloran used to work at the, at the radio station, too, at the CFCH, and he was a salesman, and his wife, Joyce O'Halloran. So when I left, she took my job, and then when I came back, she was expecting, so I got my job back. <laughs> Worked very well, and we're still friends. I saw her yesterday. Um, how was she doing? She's doing well. She's doing well. She's downsizing. Give me a whole bag of books to get rid of. So I said, don't throw books away. I'll take them, Joyce. Anyway, she's doing well. Are um, you a book hoarder? Yeah. I'll show you all my books. The first step is admitting it. I am a hoarder for books, for sure. <laughs> right on. But I am downsizing. Every time the library has a sale, Peter takes some bags of books into them. Good. Yeah. Anyway, um, so then Peter and I went out for a couple of years, and we finally got married. And so when I was at the Nugget, I was pregnant, I remember, and that's when Kennedy was assassinated. Mm. I remember standing at the counter upstairs, and he'd display advertising. And I was about seven months pregnant, I think. And I remember he was, he was shot. Yeah. It's not a cliche. People uh, do remember where, where they, they were, were and what they were doing yeah. when there was a tragedy. Yeah, that's where I was. Anyway, Peter and I were married at St. John's Church in 1962. And then we had our kids, and I went to university. And then when I graduated from university in 1980, gee, I was reading the Nugget one night, and I said, oh, the museum needs a curator. Oh, nice. <laughs> Perfect. I would never have applied for the job if I hadn't had a degree, a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> so I applied for the job. And Tom Chambers at the time was, uh, he was chair of the board. 
And I got hired. I see him once in a while because he goes to one of the Anakin churches in town. Yeah, yeah. So I, I see him at different events. And uh, yeah, so he actually hired me to work at the museum. Oh, cool. Yeah, really was. So I took over from Frida Barrett, who is a lady in North Bay, who is uh, a well-known artist. Hmm. And uh, so she, uh, we uh, overlapped for a couple of weeks, and she showed me the ropes. And uh, so I was on Riverbend, I guess, for about 11 years, and it was great. She had instigated Pioneer Day and Collector's Day and this sort of thing. And, um, uh, yeah, like we'd get... 3,000 visitors a year or, you know, something like that. I used to keep stats and uh, I used to have all sorts of, I had, I was, the board gave me a lot of leeway and uh, I used to uh, dream up all sorts of things, you know, for the weekends to bring people in. The Nugget was great because, and George Cleeter was the, uh, one of the reporters at the time and, um, what was the name of his column again? He had a column. I don't know. <laughs> you know I, I, I know George. He sings in our choir at the church, the St. John's. Uh, but he would come down every time. And who was, in, who was and Bud Berry, the photographer. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the Nugget was a great supporter. Every Because I would send them press releases. And see, all this typing that I learned in London was good. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I, I had the symphony down there. Part of the symphony came down, and Bill Fleming, who was Peter's cousin, actually. They don't live here anymore. He played the trombone, and I had them all lined up in the hallway playing, and part of his trombone was sort of going into the boys' wash. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we had, uh, I had a movie projector, and Gord Restoul from the mm -hmm. Nicholson Reserve, he gave me a tape, and I still got it. I think Eagle, it was from Eagle, Eagles of the River, Dokees. Yeah. yeah, Eagles of the River. I oh. still got it. It's a wonderful story. It's a history of you know Dokees. He was a nice man. He used to come down and visit regularly and bring his family with him. Gordon and I became really good friends. Oh, we had a lot of special events down there, and, and but the Nugget was really really good, you know, for coverage. The museum was excellent, uh, and I learned a lot. But like I said, the board gave me a lot of leeway, so I had a chance to use my creativity and my imagination and my years of experience. 